Hello everybody. Today we are going to be looking at theory of the firm as our first lesson on the advanced level economics. It is of course a topic on the microeconomics and theory of the firm is just a topic that is out to answer some few questions about how a firm, how a business entity puts together factors of production in order to create goods and services with the objective of making profit. We know that a firm is an entity, it is a business organization that hires factors of production such as labor, purchases others such as land or rents on land and then capital in order to produce goods and services with the main objective of maximizing profit. So we are going to be looking at four major questions that business entities, which we call firms here, are out to answer. The very first question that a firm has to answer is what outputs, what outputs should they produce? This question is very imperative because you do not just produce as an entrepreneur or a businessman because you are able, because you are financially able or maybe physically or mentally able to produce. You need to produce a particular quantity, a particular output. And we are going to discover the little secret of how to determine that output. What is that output I should produce? The next question after you must have sorted out your output you should produce is what is the cost? What is your cost of production? How much will this output cost you? That output you already determined. Should I produce 10,000 cartons of bread? Should I produce one carton? Should I produce 50 cartons? After you have decided on the output, then the next question is, how much will it cost me to produce the already determined output? And then the third, Question is, what price? As I have produced this output at that cost, how much will I sell each unit? Remember, we have as our objective as a private firm to maximize profit. How much price will I charge per unit? And then the last but not the least question that every firm, every private firm must answer is, how much profit or loss? How much profit or loss will I make if I produce this output at this cost and I charge this price? Will it permit me to make profit or will it permit me to make loss? So we are going to be taking all of this step after step and that will lead us to our very first sub-section or sub-heading which is the concept of cost. The concept of cost. What is cost? Cost simply refers to the sacrifice that we make in order to gather factors of production to create goods and services. That sacrifice may be financial, it may be in terms of time, it may be material, it may be in terms of just our mental ability. What are we going to sacrifice in order to create goods and services? You cannot produce goods and services without gathering factors of production such as land, labor, capital, raw materials, you need input. So that is basically what we are going to be looking at here. And so we will be looking at cost in some, some six categories. We are going to classify cost into six categories. The very first classification of cost is going to be total cost. Just from its appellation, total cost, it tells us that it is the total amount of expenses that an entrepreneur or a businessman incurs in order to gather factors of production such as land, labor, and capital to produce goods and services. And total cost is simply calculated as we will be abbreviating total cost with TC. 
So when you see TC, no, we are referring to total cost. So total cost is simply calculated as total fixed cost plus total variable cost. You must be asking yourself what total fixed cost means, what total variable cost means. We will discover that in the next sub classification of cost, which is total fixed cost. So, total fixed cost simply refers to the expenses that a businessman makes in order to acquire fixed assets or fixed factors of production. Fixed factors of production such as what? We have land, we have buildings, we have machinery. These are expenses that we make only once in the short run period of the business. We do not buy land every year or every day as we produce. We do not repay for the same piece of land we've already bought. When you pay rent on land, you don't pay every year. When you have paid for the construction of the building, which is your fixed asset, you don't pay every year. That is the reason why we call, we, we, we say that land, buildings, and machines fall on our fixed assets. We also have things like insurance premium. We also have interest rates. When you go to take a loan and you've decided on an interest rate, you have agreed on an interest rate, or the bank has given you an interest rate, whether you take that loan and you keep it without producing, whether you produce, whether you use only part of the money, the interest rate was already agreed and it doesn't change. So that is why interest is considered as part of total fixed cost. So total fixed cost, as we've already heard, the explanation is simply calculated by taking our total cost minus our total variable cost. So when you take your total cost, and you subtract total variable cost from it, it gives you the total fixed cost, which is the expense you make on fixed factors of production such as land. And then we have the third, which is total total variable cost. Total variable cost just like it sounds, variable. When they say something varies, it means it changes over time. Total variable cost, which is also called operating cost or running cost, simply refers to the expenses that a businessman or an entrepreneur makes in order to gather varying factors of production on a day-to-day -day basis. Those factors of production that change as output is changing. Those factors of production that if you need to produce more, you need to hire more of them or you need to purchase more of them or spend more on them. Such as what? Transportation, electricity, water bills, labor. If we must produce more goods and services, we must hire more labor. If we want to produce fewer goods or lesser goods and services, we should hire a lesser amount of labor. So variable cost changes as output is changing. And it is simply calculated as total cost minus total fixed cost. So that is how you get your total variable cost.